Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. So, a few clouds out there, and that warm front extending northbound, so southern Kentucky feeling really nice. Already in the low 70s, we'll finish off in the mid, maybe even some upper 70s. And then you get in central zones in the 60s. And then you go northbound in the 50s. But I will tell you this, it's slowly but surely creeping on in. Now we're at 70 degrees in Somerset. We're at 68 now in the London Corman area. Good feel outside. We'll all finish off. I say all of us. Most of us will finish off in the low 70s later on today. If there are some left off in the mid to upper 60s, it's going to be northern Kentucky. But either way, it's above average. It looks good. It feels good. The highest Halloween temperature that we've had in the past five years is 70 degrees. We will actually beat that later on today. So in the past five years, it's going to be a lot cooler than where we are going to be today. Dry today, too. So there's some good news. Trigger treating temperatures anywhere, I'd say some from 65 degrees to about 71. Remember, six to eight is here in Lexington, but that's not for everybody, okay? We've been mentioning six to eight, so if you're sitting in other locations, other counties or cities, you may say, well, I guess I'm six to eight. If you don't know, check out WKYT.com. We actually have a list on there of all the locations. So jump on there, WKYT.com, and you can find that list. So we go off into the evening hours, like I said, mid to upper 60s for most during trigger treating and dry. Kids will be in full force. They'll be out and about. Take it easy through those neighborhoods because uh, there's nobody that's going to be inside with this kind of weather. Really nice weather. Warm air streaming northbound and it pushes a lot of that cool air to the north. And we'll actually see possible record-breaking temperatures tomorrow. The record is at 83 degrees and I do believe some of us will actually reach that. Michelle Gray sent this one in. This is from Kinley and that's in Fleming County of Thomas the Train. Real cute. Nice little firefighter. That's Jacob. Age four from Savannah Reynolds. And then last but not least, you got a stormtrooper and Raggedy Ann doll. Cute. That's Hunter and Ella. Albert, really, really cute pictures. Remember, I'm going to show some off tomorrow, too. So if you haven't seen your pictures, I'm still going to show some tomorrow morning on WKYT this morning. Seven day forecast. The easy look at it is today's nice. Uh, trigger treating is great. We're right there around 80 degrees tomorrow. Could break a record tomorrow. And then the next best chance of rain is going to be on Thursday. So after that, it's not all that bad. The weekend looks good. All right. All right. Just like thank last you. week, Thursday yeah, exactly. had a little rain. Rain chance, exactly anyway. Right. Didn't yeah, get much. Right. All right. Thank you, Micah. And another reason to vaccinate children from measles, plus some new data is out on one of the most common chronic childhood diseases. Kenneth Craig has details on this Better Living report. The American Academy of Pediatrics advises the best way to manage asthma in children is to eliminate household triggers. Doctors say reducing exposure to dust mites, mold, and secondhand smoke can be as effective as medications in controlling the disease. Physicians at Cornell say children with autism have significantly more mutations in their DNA. Doctors found children with autism spectrum disorder had more than twice as many potentially harmful mutations than their unaffected siblings. And a new study suggests a deadly complication from measles is more common than previously thought. Researchers found the neurological disorder SSPE can lay dormant in infected children and become fatal years later. Doctors say children who don't get vaccinated are putting other children, especially infants, at risk. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York. We're so glad you're with us today. If you like shrimp, scallops, fish, you're really in luck. Eating seafood twice a week has been shown to lower your risk of heart disease by more than 30%. Scott Hawkins, general manager of Palmer's Fresh Grill, is here with delicious looking food. Thanks for coming in here today. Thank you, Barbara. And, nice and isn't that wonderful that, to know that it's that good for you as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, in my opinion, I think that Seafood is an underutilized food source throughout the entire country. Um, and I'm also representing the Lexington Seafood Nutrition Partnership mm -hmm. as well today. And um, the month of October was National Seafood Month, um, which is an interesting fact. And uh, we're mainly here to educate the public on uh, the, the great things about seafood. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acids are one of the more healthy um, nu nutrients that you can um, put um, in your system. So I'm here to educate educate uh, the public about seafood and um, and also the, the partnership as well. When it can be delicious and that good for you at the same time, that's really a wonderful thing. What did you bring here? This <laughs> looks great. Well, uh, what we have here is an ahi tuna sashimi right here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a sushi grade, so you can 
basically um, just put a small sear to it. Um, that way you don't jeopardize the natural flavors of it. We have a sauce that is an oriental style Asian sauce. It consists of um, some oyster sauce. It's got a chili Thai, a little cilantro and garlic. Um, also, it's pretty healthy as well. Some toasted sesame. And then it's going to have a little wasabi and sriracha on the side there just to kind of kick it up a notch. I love the presentation. It's almost too pretty to, to eat, but I, I'm sure that people get over that really fast, yes, don't they, absolutely. and get right into absolutely. it. Absolutely. What about this? So this is one of our seasonal items at Palmer's. This is a pan-seared um, Pacific halibut. Mm -hmm. Halibut is a very nice, clean fish. Um, my, our, my recommendation is always to pan-sear. You lock in the flavor in that sense. Just a little salt and pepper on there. Um, and we have a chipotle pumpkin pesto as the sauce here and we are on top of a whipped butternut squash with a pan roasted Brussels sprout salad there it's got a little kick to it as well so how wonderful but you said that's seasonal so people need to come yes. out and enjoy it yes. now and we will feature items like this about every four weeks so we'll put something out on our features uh, that are at the peak of the season I, I love this partnership how do people get involved and take the healthy heart pledge well the healthy heart pledge is actually on uh, the website you see on your screen there seafoodnutrition.org mm -hmm. it's basically built for you to educate yourself on the benefits of seafood. That's great. So you can just check that out and then come out. And of course, you've got a wonderful menu. I'm sure that if people aren't familiar with a lot of seafood dishes, I'm sure that your crew can explain absolutely. everything and if make you great can't recommendations. Find the absolutely. If you can't find the education there on a website, come to Palmer's and we'll, we'll educate you to the best of our knowledge and you'll get the opportunity to try some things as well. So. Wonderful. It is Palmer's Fresh Grill out at Lexington Green. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. And there it is. You just have to show up and try it and enjoy. And we're back with more. Stay with us. Welcome back, and it's so good to have you here on WKYT. You can help those who are homeless and those dealing with addiction by simply shooting hoops at Rupp Arena. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Yes, it, it does. <laughs> Johnny Carino's Hoops for Hope is happening next week. And to learn more about it, we're joined by Carrie Thayer, Director of Development at the Hope Center. Welcome. Glad to have you Thank here today. You. Thanks yeah, for having really me. Really appreciate you coming in. First of all, for those who, who don't know about the Hope Center, uh, tell us its mission, what role yes. it really plays in Lexington. The Hope Center, we help over 700 each and every day mm -hmm. with programs such as uh, recovery and recovery for addiction and also mental health and homeless veterans program. We're basically addressing all the underlying causes of homelessness and we have programs to help each client to stand on their own and be a part of the community again. What is this canvas behind us all about? That is, um, these canvases are going to be around all of our events and we're actually going to open them up to the public. A client did design them. They say, we give hope. I brought the hope canvas. And we uh, are having the public sign these in memory of someone they've lost from addiction or overdose and also in honor of someone who's in recovery and who is battling it. So they're really to symbolize how each and every one of us in our community, we are all affected mm -hmm. by addiction and by the overdoses and the drug issues that are going on in our and community. Some of them tell a very brief story yeah, very uh, powerful. about the person lost. Uh, the community can jump in and help by yes. being part of Johnny Carino's Night of yeah. Hope, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Hoops for Hope is coming up on November 10th and that is next Thursday and it's a really fun way for people to come in and help us with our mission of addressing the underlying causes of homelessness. They can sign up um, to a community team of four and they can sign up on our website and you actually get to come to Rupp Arena and shoot on sh from shot spots. So it's not you don't have to, you're not playing actual basketball. It's not really intense. You're actually shooting from shot spots for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds really easy, but everyone does get a little <laughs> winded from it. Well, it but. sounds like until you try, right? That's yeah. right. And it's an opportunity that people don't often have. Exactly. To be right it in the middle of Rupp Arena. Fun. It's a lot of fun, and we're putting teams together right now. All right. Very good. A lot of fun, great cause. Thank you so much Thank for coming. Thank you. Good Appreciate luck with it very that. much. All right, those trick or treaters are getting ready to uh, head out this afternoon and evening. What about that weather? Yeah, Micah, at least this time they won't be hiding their costumes. No, absolutely not. And I think that's what a lot of parents are excited about. I mean, they spent time, they spent some money on these costumes. They just kind of want to show off their kids, get cute little pictures. You won't have to put a coat over them this year. It actually feels really nice later on this evening. And later on this evening, after finishing off in 
in the low 70s. Trigger trading temperatures will be mid to upper 60s for the most part. Can't rule out a 70 or 71 degree reading when we actually start trick or treating 5, 5 30, 6 o'clock. Now remember, not everybody starts at 6. Some people start a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Check out WKYT.com. Okay, very good weather for us. Absolutely. Just wonderful. Yes. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for WKYT News at Noon. Happy Halloween, everybody.